Just the other day, we got some pretty huge Starfield news where Todd Howard himself confirmed that the team over at Bethesda Game Studios have an at least five year plan in place for future Starfield updates and DLC. They've never really worked on a game for that long before, but of course it's starting to make sense with Starfield considering it's a space game and there's pretty much no limit to what they could do. But is this five year plan actually going to be good and will it be worth it for us and Bethesda? Because they've had a five year plan before with Fallout 76, which I'm sure we all remember. We all saw how that turned out and pretty much how most of the community just started disliking a lot of the updates and the new DLC type of content, feeling very mediocre. But of course Starfield is different, it's being worked on by the core team at Bethesda Game Studios, unlike Fallout 76, but we really need to just discuss where this five year plan could go and what it will be like. Now we know for sure that actual DLCs are coming, it's confirmed that Shattered Space will be Starfield's first DLC, so that obviously also confirms another DLC in the future, but that was expected, because in the past Bethesda have done a number of different DLCs for each of their games. Fallout 4 basically had three major DLCs and three smaller building DLCs that added in new settlement objects and stuff like that. Bethesda has confirmed in the past that they have more planned for Starfield than any of their previous games, right? So of course a part of this 5 year plan will be DLCs that add new quest lines and content, you know, such as Shattered Space and whatever comes after it. Now I did make a video the other day discussing how a Star Station Builder DLC could be really amazing, but we've got to look at the downsides of Starfield's future DLCs too. I think that we can all agree that it seems wildly obvious that Creation Club or at least some kind of microtransaction store is coming. Whether that's going to be from modders or not, I don't know. But with things like weapon and armor skins being on every single weapon and spacesuit in the game, and there not being any skins unless they're unique or unless you've got the premium or constellation edition, it seems abundantly clear that this here is a future store. And look, as much as I hate microtransaction stores, I don't actually mind this and let me explain why. If this is what it takes to sort of make Bethesda update Starfield for years to come and give us tons of actual content on top of this, rather than make a lesser online version of the franchise, which you all know I would hate, it's just my personal opinion, then I'm down for this. My problem isn't actually with stores themselves, I get it, but it's more so the prices. Like you had to spend £5 to get a Pip-Boy skin in Fallout 4's Creation Club because you have to buy the points and then spend the points. It would be a lot better if each skin was just like, I don't know, 50p each or something, which is about 60 cents, I believe. But I could be wrong about that. I will say one thing I actually really liked about Fallout 4's Creation Club was the settlement stuff. I paid for a lot of that, and most of the time it was half price, but I still paid for a lot of that, and I never regretted it. I really enjoyed the new settlement objects because I felt that they were decent, still not the perfect price, but a decent price, and they added in things to the game that I really enjoyed and could get a lot of fun out of. I just don't want Starfield to start selling weapon skins and crappy content like that, but it's clear that this is what's going to happen, so we might as well suck it up and just accept it now. But like I said, if by adding a stall this means Bethesda continues to update Starfield and give us actual DLC content like Shattered Space or maybe a Starfield version of the new land DLCs that add new settlements and cities and you know, tons of new armor, so spacesuits and weapons, etc. like Fallout 4's Far Harbor, Fallout 4's Nuka World, Skyrim's Dragonborn DLC, you know. If they added a store and that meant that they could keep continuously adding actual DLCs, then I would personally be okay with this. Starfield is still getting hundreds of thousands of players every single day on Steam alone, and we need to remember that that's not including Xbox players. And I really do think that we are just at the start right now. Again looking back at Bethesda's older games like Skyrim and Fallout 4 and even Fallout 76 especially, those games were wildly different when they launched until their DLCs came along. So in 5 years time, Starfield is going to look wildly different to what it does now, with tons of new content and fixes and changes coming along too. Such as Bethesda just said that they want to add city maps, which is a must in my opinion and probably should have been the base game, but either way, they're going to add it in a free update. So probably in just a few months we'll no longer have to run around New Atlantis trying to remember where everything is, 
and just one little change like that will massively change the game for the better, so hopefully you get the point. Starfield is going to look a lot different over the next few years compared to what it looks like now. All I'm really saying is I definitely think Bethesda are planning a lot of story-based DLCs. I'm just saying get ready to see the building DLCs make a return. We're probably going to get DLCs that do nothing but add new outpost items or new ship modules, but that will be on top of DLCs that add a lot of new quest lines or even new settlements and possibly cities and spacesuits and weapons and enemies just like we had before. I honestly think that looking back at Fallout 4 is the best way to sort of look at this. You know, we've got two good DLCs with Automatron and Nuka World and one amazing DLC with Far Harbor, but all three of these added in a lot of new content and places to explore and such. But we also got free building DLCs on top of this that only really added in new items in Fallout 4's settlement mode, which, for those of you who haven't played it, is basically Fallout 4's outpost building. And it's a lot better than outpost building, but anyway. And I think that we can expect the same thing with Starfield. Now, like I said earlier, this personally doesn't bother me. If they fix the crappy outpost and decorating system, I'm down to get some building DLCs, especially if some of these are ship building DLCs. But I'm just hoping that we get a season pass so I don't have to pay for everything once it releases. I'd rather just pay a lot of money up front and then just get it all when it comes out. But that's a whole another topic for discussion, like will Bethesda even do a Starfield season pass if a store is coming? Because we all remember that when they added Creation Club to Skyrim and Fallout 4, somebody tried to sue Bethesda saying that the season pass says that they'll get all future DLC if purchased. But of course they don't get anything in Creation Club for free. And Pete Hines and Bethesda basically argued that Creation Club wasn't DLC, which yes it fucking was, let's just admit that and stop being stupid. It's content, you download it, that means it's downloadable content, aka DLC. But that's a discussion for another time, I don't want to open up that bag of worms. But anyway look, so too long didn't read, Bethesda apparently has a 5 year plan. That means we're probably going to get tons of DLCs, some of these will not have a lot of content, others will, some will just be building DLCs that add, you know, outpost items, decorating items, maybe more ship modules and weapon skins and stuff like that. We're probably going to see a store at some point down the road too, just get ready for all of that, but of course we are going to get actual DLCs as well such as Shattered Space, which is likely going to open up a brand new questline that will hopefully be quite long, you know, that we can just all sit back and enjoy. I'm just saying, be prepared for the crappy DLC stuff too. But anyway, that is all I had to share with you today, so if you enjoyed the video, I kindly ask that you leave it a like, as it really helps out the channel and myself more than you can imagine. And of course, if you do want to stay up to date on Starfield and plenty of other single player games, then this is absolutely the place for you, so please do consider subscribing, I've got you covered and we would love to have you join us. Lastly, as always, a huge massive thank you to our channel members, your support means the world guys, so thank you once again, but with that all said and done, we are going to wrap up, so thank you all so much for watching, and I really hope to see you next time. Peace.